So we must give ourselves to being equipped. I was reading from Ephesians chapter 1. I read from verse 1. I actually was supposed to read all the way to verse 16, but I stopped in verse 14, but you can actually continue. We must give ourselves to it. We must give ourselves to being equipped, to being discipled. You cannot, there are many things about the kingdom of God that you need to understand. There are many ways that we need to know how we represent God. You don't always represent God. You, representing God is not an automatic thing. Yes, you were made in the image and according to the likeness of God, but it was your spirit man that was made in the image and according to the likeness of God. This body is not in the image and according to the likeness of God. Do you understand what I just said? Yes, this your physical body was not what was made. If that was the case, all of us would look alike. But we don't, right? This body is the formation of DNA coming together. What was made in the image and according to the likeness of God is what? It's your spirit man that was made in the image and according to the likeness of God. In Genesis 1, 26, it was the spirit man that was being created, not the physical body. That's why in Genesis 2, it says that there was work on the earth, but there was no man to till the ground. Why would you say there is no man in chapter 2? When in chapter 1, you just told me that you created man. Because he created them, the spirit man. He did not create the physical body yet. So you must expose yourself so that you can really begin to represent and what does it mean? It means that as you give yourself to the ministry of the word through discipleship, as you do so intentionally, and then you live a life of consecration, which is the last part of this teaching that I'm coming into before we end this session. You're the image of God that you are, because you are not your body, you are your spirit man. The image of God that you are now finds easy expression. The reason why the love, you know, God is love. So if I'm made in his image, I have it within my spirit man to also love unconditionally. The reason why it is hard for you to love unconditionally is because you're full of flesh. And I'm talking about that physically. I'm talking as in you're full of self. You've not lived a consecrated life. And I will show you what that means, what that looks like. But when you begin to deny yourself and you begin to live a life of consecration and you give yourself to discipleship, your body becomes too weak to be finding expression all the time. That is your flesh. It becomes too weak. The, many times, the reason why we are quick to sin is the empowerment of the flesh. Have you noticed that when you are fasting, after a while in the fast, it is hard to talk too much. If you are still talking a lot during fast, you've not reached the peak of your... <laughs> you've not gotten to the crescendo of your strength. Have you noticed that? Yeah. But it is not within the DNA of God in your spirit, man, to be an excessive talker. No. Self-control is a possibility for the believer. It's actually one of the fruits of the spirit. How does what you are in your spirit begin to find expression so that you can really represent God? Discipleship and consecration. Consistent consecration. Not once in six months because I have a battle I must fight. No. A consistent life of consecration. Then you notice that, oh, it becomes easier. At first, it's not easy. There's a pushback. But always remember, in that spirit man of yours that has come together with the Holy Spirit, it is there, therein lies the possibility to love, to be gentle, to be kind. To All those fruits of the Spirit are within you to do, in your spirit. But it would remain dormant for as long as the body is so pumped, so filled, so overwhelmed. You must give yourself to discipleship. You must give yourself to consecration. God's kingdom comes with a different type of mindset that many of us were never familiar with when we're in the world. We must give ourselves to it. And that's why I even want to implore some of us on here who are yet to join the Life Academy. Join the Life Academy. It's the only program that we actually have that intentionally brings about discipleship to the believer. Starting from even understanding the era that happened, the beginning that happened before Genesis chapter 1. What you saw in Genesis, that's a scripture that the Bible starts with Genesis 1 verse 1. Doesn't mean that was the beginning of all beginnings. It was the beginning of the creation of the earth. There are many activities that precede Genesis 1 verse 1. Now, why do I need to know what happened before Genesis 1 verse 1? Because some of us do not, we relate in warfare. The way we handle warfare, can it shows even the kingdom of darkness that we are ignorant. As long as you are a human being, you are an enemy of... <laughs> I said enemy of the state, but what I mean is you're the enemy of, an enemy of the kingdom of darkness. 
Because unto you is given what Satan actually wants. Governance over the earth. Satan wants it. He wants to be the Lord over the earth. Then God then chooses to create a man and then give it to him. So you were born into a war that existed. You must be aware of that. So that it would impact how you even pray. Because when you know that something happened before I was born, then I, it's not like I have been a selected, um, you know how people say, um, um, those of us who have experienced so much in life, it's a sign that we've been called. Every man is experiencing something in life. <laughs> Warfare is the state of all of mankind till you have authority. Don't think, oh, well, I don't think that rich man has any warfare in his life. Have you gone into his life to go and see what he's dealing with? You think money is, it solves all problems? You might solve the physical problem of you can buy anything you want, but can you buy salvation? Can you buy eternity? Can you buy healing for certain diseases that are curated specifically from the kingdom of darkness for your sake? You slept, found yourself eating a demonic food, woke up, all of a sudden fiber begins to go. Even if they gave you $100 million, will it solve it? They will remove the fiber and it will keep growing because the root of it is in the spirit. The doctor can only but eliminate a physical problem that his eyes can see. He cannot correct a spiritual problem, except he's a kingdom doctor. Like some of you are going to be by the grace of God. That's when a client comes to you, a patient comes to you. You see the pattern of sickness, you know. Yes, I'm a medical doctor. I will give you the physical drug. But let me tell you, my sister, this one is in the spirit. We are those doctors. There will be many. You need that knowledge. You need to also know what is going to happen at the end of the age. You need to know why man was created. Why me? Why me? You need this lack of discipleship that causes the question of why me? You need to know why man? What is man? When you say a man is a man, I'm not talking about the male gender. Mankind, what is that? Then who is the Holy Spirit? What advantage do I have in knowing the Holy Spirit? I have a whole God inside of me. What do I have access to as a result of that reality? What benefits do I have access to? What can I do with what I now have? How can they give you the key into America and you don't know what to do with it? It's lack of knowledge that makes that ignorance. It's not even a demonic attack. Well, ignorance is sponsored by darkness, but it's because if you expose yourself to that knowledge, Darkness flees. What is prayer? How do you pray? What is an effective way of praying? Because there is something, according to the book of James, it is possible to pray amiss. You can be praying and you are praying amiss. Amiss means you're not praying in alignment. What does it mean to pray in alignment? Because it is prayer that is prayed in alignment that you can leave that prayer knowing that I'm going to be answered. But some of us don't even have that assurance that our prayers will be answered. It's lack of discipleship. What is dominion? What exactly are we being called to dominate? Some of us think we are being called to dominate our fellow human beings. That's why you, you, you hired somebody to come and help you clean your home. And because you live in a country that, that is lawless, unfortunately, you are maltreating that person. You are exerting dominion in the wrong place. If you look at Genesis 1, 26 to 28, man was not among the list of people man was called to dominate. You don't dominate man. Man is only dominated by his spirit. God, give me power, give me power. If you don't understand what dominion is being sent for, he will not entrust it into your hands. And if you've not, your mind has not been renewed, you'll go and seek power somewhere else. What are the spiritual currencies that you can use in exchange for some of the realities you want to have here on earth? Spiritual currencies, the, of like the blessing, like favor. Favor is a spiritual currency. Goodness, the mercy of God is a spiritual currency. With God's mercy, you can exchange guilt for the verdict of non guilty a verdict can be changed as a result of the exchange of the currency called mercy. Do we understand those spiritual currencies? What is death? I used to be that person that was afraid of death. Tell me to talk about death. Although now I still, I'm not so overly welcoming of it because I'm like, Satan, just because I'm talking about death it doesn't mean that you should come and be acting silly. Not here. Okay. But in the past, I don't even want to hear it because my understanding of death is, oh, you know, death, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. We will all die. But... What does that look like? What is really death? What does it mean to die? And uh, this physical body that dies, what does that mean for a believer? And what does that mean for the person who is not a believer? What is intimacy? Those are, those are principles in discipleship that you need to give yourself to. Right? And on this platform, because God has called us to go and equip the woman, it is literally a discipleship ground. 
Better we're discipling you so that you can then step into the next phase of becoming a merchant, or we are discipling you so that you can become a helper comparable. It is to the end that you will be equipped so that when you leave this platform, we, we want a man who marries any of our ladies to come back and say thank you. Not that, oh my gosh. We don't want that. So women come on here and they're like, I understood honor because I was on here and I listened to it. It is discipleship that makes her know now how she can relate with the man that she has been praying for all those years. Do you understand? So you're here, you've not signed up for the discipleship program. You should give yourself to it, honestly. Give yourself to it. Buy wisdom. And all. You're being sold wisdom, curated wisdom. So sign up for it. Buy books. Sign up for the opportunity to be equipped as a disciple, to be equipped so that God can finally send you forth. The sending forth does not happen until the equipping has happened. That is the manual. That is the pattern of Jesus in the Bible. He doesn't break that pattern no matter how much he loves you and he sees that you are burning. That's why we can come together and we can pray 20 hours every week. And do it 20 hours marathon, 50 hours marathon, equipping. Equipping is how God then says, now I can send you forth. He doesn't send you forth because you were able to stand and speak in tongues for 50 hours. He sends you forth because now you know knowledge.